Hello all, it's me, Annie from Blitz Gaming. I hope you're having a great weekend. It's lovely and cool in the UK, which is great for me. Okay, today's video, an update um, on the thermal uh, video I've done. I don't know if you've seen it, but we did a thermal test with MSI's Mag, uh, B560, Asus H510, Prime and Gigabyte H510 uh, S2H motherboards at the end of the day. Now the bazooka, um, the MSI 560 come out quite hot using the Intel fan. We're going to change that. We're going to put in a Hyper 212 Black Edition. Now hopefully that's powerful enough to keep it cool. If it ain't, we'd have to make another video. Now obviously if it does keep it cool, yeah, uh, we had to get a decent frame rate, so we're now going to use the RX 480, which is a, it's better than the 550, yeah, even though it's an older number, but it's actually a faster card, um, because one thing I did say on those videos is that the frame rate's capped, regardless what you do, the, gra the other graphic card being a budget graphic card is not fast enough uh, to keep up with basically the um, Intel 11400F. So I'm going to have 16 gigs of memory. We're also going to have the Liani Lee fans. Now I'm not going to reinstall the fans. If you want to see the video, because I've got a dedicated video to installing the fans, see here. We're also using a gigabyte, um, gigabyte, yeah. Uh, no, I'm lying. Cooler Master, 500 watt PSU. At the end of the day, that should be enough to run everything quite happily. Um, installation drive, we've got a Western Digital Blue. At the end of the day, MVM drive. So, at the end of the day, um, and that's all going in together in our classic Cooler Master 4000D airflow case. So, we got on with a build. And we go through the, uh, as we have done it before, how to build a PC. Okay, let's get on with it and see what the benchmarks come out at the end. Okay. Right. One bazooka. One MSI Mag bazooka motherboard. Okay. CPU, the Intel 11400F. Okay, if you haven't, don't know, don't take that cover off, leave it there. Intel CPU, it has two notches, yeah, each side, and they line up the two notches, which is one there and one there on the socket. Put that in there like so, done. Put that back down in a plastic cover, should ping off just like that. That makes sure it goes down correctly. Don't lose it at the end of the day. If you ever sell the motherboard, we'll have to send it back. You need that to protect the pins. Okay, 1M2. Now I'm not going to use this main socket because obviously, um, for reasons being, that I may give this board away at the end of the day. Um, we'll set it off and um, so we're going to use a um, second socket because under that heat sink there's a plastic uh, seal uh, which I don't want to break you're probably saying I must be mad at the end of the day I mean if I was going for complete uh, benchmarks on 
a CPU. Um, for the, for the, sorry for the, the MVM itself. Don't know I should put it in there, but <laughs> we're not doing a benchmark, benchmark on the MVM. So, I won't work right with And being only an RX 480, I don't think it's going to make much difference to the frame rate. Okay, if you don't know, you must put the retention bracket on before you put the motherboard in the uh, system. Otherwise you're going to have a bit of a nightmare trying to get it installed. Okay, so when you got there, you get these four little nut type things. Screw down. So make an angle so you get a even pressure. You just do them up thumb tight, then we tie them up properly. Thermal paste. Now we want the cooler master label facing downwards. Well, you don't have to if you don't want to, but we want it all nice and lovely jubbly. And uh, this comes with a little sticker on the bottom. Yeah, cellophane sticker. Make sure you forget to take it off. Okay, so we've got the old fan on. At the end of the day, I see you say, suck air in from the fans, blow straight up back, out of the exhaust. Got the hyper memory. Now I did say on installation of this fan, it gets very close to the memory modules, but according to their paperwork, it does clear. Now these are low profile sticks, the one we're using, and we don't have to go up that, just try in that socket right up there, so it just clears at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, the CPU fan. Oh, so I've got a video of how to install this on AM4 and Intel 1200. You won't put the second fan on because obviously if you buy one you may not have a second fan and we want to give you readings with one fan. Now I'm hoping this is powerful enough to obviously cool uh, the CPU at um, better than the, uh, the Intel fan. We don't want it to get to 100C. If it gets to 100C, the other thing will be I do a bigger version of this uh, with two fans, or it be in a nocture, or it be going water cooling. But problem is, you know, this is about 35 pounds. 
So you already put the budget up if you're buying a building a budget system, but the Levon 400F, I wouldn't actually class as a budget processor, it's 150 plus pound. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you're talking about a top range cord is gonna be a hundred pound at the end of the day. Uh, so again, it's putting the budget up. So now we've got the Corsair 4000D turned over. Now all the wires are already in position. As I said, I'm not going to go through uh, putting the uh, power supply in. On this case, I have got another video coming on the Asus Prime. We'll do the same thing again. We'll put that in another case and we will do the old thing from scratch. Okay. Let's get her in. First we need a don't get the IO shield, back plate. This comes with the motherboard. It doesn't come from anywhere else but the motherboard. They're all unique to the motherboard you buy, so don't go losing them. It prevents you damaging the, uh, the IO sockets and obviously just sticking your fingers inside. Now, obviously, uh, if you haven't seen my videos, versus the build one from scratch, I'll quickly let, me, let you know. We have standoffs in the case, they look like little screws, or stand up, and they look like you have another screw that screws into them. And they line up, each one of them lines up with the holes on your motherboard. Yeah, so hold it down in position in the right spots. Yeah, they should come with the case. Yeah, so you should be fine on that front. I mean, if you don't, you may find in some cases, yeah, you find out the screws what you actually put the ball down onto the standoffs don't fit. Yeah, every now and then it air happen because there's different types of standoffs. But companies use different versions, coarse red, fine red. Now I find in my case because I build so many PCs um, I've got a standard box of screws or bolts um, you're talking about I don't know nine pound ten pound for about I don't know five hundred screws yeah assortment so if I find if I don't fit I just take them all out put new ones in throw the other ones away so they all match up and just in case you're wondering I use screw fix it tool set at the end of the day. I mean, it's perfect for computers because that's what it's designed for. It comes with this lovely screwdriver, and all the uh, bits you put in the screwdriver are all magnetic, so fantastic. And just before you ask, this video is not promoted by anybody, and then they it is played by me. I suggest put all the screws in, and then they. You just thought, take yourself, and so, say, oh, well, I can't be asked to put that one in there, don't need that one. Uh, that's not the attitude, because basically when you start putting your graphic card in there, you start putting it around, your board bends. And the only way you're going to keep it straight is basically having the screws in. Okay. Now, all my leads... Uh, I've got a 4000, of course, here 4000D. Now, in most cases these days, decent ones allows you to route or route 
all the leads behind the motherboard so you can hide them and in day so if you wonder where all these leads come so we've got the power supply at the bottom of the case with a fan blowing outwards yeah at the bottom so all the air comes straight out does not go into the system and then the leads are basically coming out of back some are coming through here for the headers at the bottom and the power supply is on the right and 8 pin one for the CPU is that going straight across through an hole at the top and back ran to the socket we should plug all them all in Now you might find some of the standoffs have not been used and you've got screws that scrolls left over this this ball's a micro atx at the end of the day and so i don't use up the full area now if i had a full a size atx uh all the standoffs will be used and they come right down basically to this plate So I'm just putting the audio header in and the USB. Now, the audio header and the USB look extremely similar to each other, but the pins are in slightly different order. Yeah, so don't try and put one in the wrong one. It won't fit, and if you try and push it too hard, it'll only break. I plug that SATA header on now, I don't need that because we ain't got a set of hard drive. I've got a USB 3 um, 45 degrees bracket at the end of the day. Try and get it off. Should we have done? In this case, it's in the wrong, in the wrong place. I don't like these USB three headers. I think they're too big. Uh, well, the head is all right. It's the cable. It's big, bulky, and if you catch that in any way, that will break the socket. Yeah, so whatever you do, be extremely careful and they with the USB 3 header. Put the power supply on for uh, the CPU. Don't forget to put this one in. If you do not put this one in, your system will not start. Sometimes when you get. Um, on some boards, you won't just have an eight, you may have an eight and a four, or an eight and an eight. For the CPU power supply. So we get a graphic card in, RX 480, this is only a micro ATX board, they've only got one Pito Express. They up time 16. It could be two, but ideally, you always want to put the graphic card one closest to the CPU. The reason being, now you can put it in the second one, but I have known it in the past. If you put it in the second one without a graphic card being in the first one, the sockets. Uh, are being blown so just as a caution state so basically you just line it up with a back plate going down a, between the motherboard and the end of the case push it straight in and it clips in position there's a clip on the socket that pulls up 
very similar to the uh, the DDR clip and holds it, holds it in position so it can't fall out so remember when you want to take it out you've got to find that clip push it down to bring the gravity card out put two screws in in this case it's two on my 3080 it's four but it's big Now, if you get a heavy, a big, really big card, you might want to get a support bracket at the laser. So when you turn your case up, there's a lot of weight with the graph card falling down, and it can be slightly out of shape. So you put support bracket in it and it, hold it in position from there. Right, I need to find a power cable for the, for the graph card. Should be one back here somewhere. There's one there. So I've got to at least one bit of wiring. It's on the 550 because it's a budget card. Um, it doesn't require power. Now it depends what your graphic card you got. You may have a, a six pin. And a pin or two six pins, two eight pins, or in case of my 3080, three eight pins, but they can be a six and an eight. So uh, remember that. So that's power. Now, if we turn it up the other way. And you can see the wiring, it's all nice and neat. Well, it's very neat. Right, then, mate. Shut that back right now, don't need that. So basically, we've got the three fans in the front, one at the back, and all connected to this Liani Lee uh, controller. This is then connected to a SATA cable, so it's got power, and also connected to a USB 2 socket header at the end of the day. Um, so you can run the software. And you, know, you don't download the software off the Annie Lee's website, get the latest stuff, and you can control all the fans, under the sun, their speed, their glowies, and uh, all sorts. I've actually found, okay, they probably ain't got the best glowies, but they've certainly got the best software. And then they, um, and you can't go wrong. Simple as that, really. Right. Let's turn it on, benchmark it, and then we can see uh, the results. Okay, before we get going, let's uh, have a look at the two CPUs. We've got running. Now you can see basically one's got turbo and one's as a. Um, I think it's playing a bit of a different, major difference in the gaming. Um, coming up on the benchmarks. Okay, we're using 266 uh, memory, just to try and make it as equal as possible. Obviously, 11400 doesn't have graphics. Now, I didn't realise at the end of the day that the, the Pentium doesn't have AVX. Now, I haven't found out the games I've been testing don't seem to require AVX, or that's a fault, but... Um, I don't know... If it played a part in at the end of the day in the benchmarks, I don't know. But there's obviously quite a bit of difference between the two architectures at the end of the day. And obviously there's only going to be one winner 
at the end of the day. One's a budget processor and one's really a mainstream gamer, all rounder. So set up, all up to date, um, Windows, all the drivers, all the games up to date, and Intel's uh, chipset driver. So no slacking there, as well as the BIOS is all up to date. Okay, you can see on the old synthetic benchmarks that the temperature on the CPU run at max speed is come down about 18C or more. So it's a massive difference over the Intel cooler. So no longer getting up to 100C, which is great. No more worries about blowing your CPU up. The scores haven't really changed at all. I think Time Spy and the CPU version change only slightly by a couple of hundred points. But otherwise, Cinebench and Blender, there was really no change considering it was at maximum power before, except it was getting over temperature. Okay, I decided to include a Pentium Gold 6405. Um, basically against the core <laughs> 11500 sorry 11400 and basically in this case at the end of the day obviously DICE and EA are making use of cores without a doubt you can see the difference they're basically going from two cores to six cores there's always, there's always a jump at the end of the day, um, basically 11400, uh, that, that wins. I mean, it plays well. Again, we're using the RX 480 um, on there as well, which is actually an old card. Um, it was running literally at 100% all the time. So it basically saying the card is out of date, really. But it does well, especially on Battlefield 5, it, it runs fine at the end of the day um, can't really complain at all really you also included the AMD 550 and you can see it's basically at its limits um, as soon as you stick the RX 480 on it's way way ahead uh, even with the the Pentium uh, there's a big difference but at the end of the day, it's only a budget card. Um, you can still get it for basically 70, 75 pound. At the end of the day, if you're only going to be doing a bit of online shopping, playing the games here and there, I think it's 720 or what we've got the settings on there, 1080p, basic settings, low settings. I mean, it's, play, it's, it's playable. I had no problem play, playing at those settings. Uh, but if you're going to play against other players, uh, that's a different matter altogether. Because you certainly don't want to slow down at all. So Total War Warhammer 2. We use the Skaven benchmark. I find it the most demanding. Because it's got, since we have a lot more magic going off on the screen. Where the other one has a lot more, I suppose, hand around fighting. Okay, basically both processes are quite equal in some way. Um, it's only when it comes to medium or high where the Pentium Gold um, 6405 frame rate drops a lot more. But otherwise, the average at the end of the day, I would say it's pretty equal. Um, I think both processes are done well. At the end of the day, or oh, it's basically Sega, their engine, it doesn't do multi-core very well. I mean, the game itself plays very well when it's going. It gets a good frame rate. Like you can see there, um, for some odd reason, as a dual-core processor, <laughs> keep up with a six-core processor. Uh, I'd add that, I, I can't say at the end of the day. I mean, we know one has basically... No turbo, and it's constantly running at full speed. Um, and I think in some cases where it got a bit overexcited, it did drop frames, and then because it's only got the two cores, where the other one could obviously step in. And at the under 25 watts, it was doing 
pretty much full speed uh, most of the time. Red Dead Redemption 2. Again, I think both processes have done well. Um, some was odd reason, bizarre reason. Um, the 11400 running at 720 with the RX 480 seemed to walk away with anything. I don't know why it it done that where the other benchmarks are not that far apart really okay the 11 400 still wins at the end of the day but it doesn't win by miles didn't use the presets here um, i found that the presets were coming out a bit strange uh, i think it automatically analyzes what you've got uh, in some cases a high setting was coming out faster than a, a lower setting so i'll just set everything to rather low medium high ultra um with a few options where you can turn certain things off okay uh, ultra settings rx480 i wouldn't bother trying to be honest with you i think it's too much demanding on the, the card and then they and you got to remember we were only in valentine we haven't gone to the city at the end of the day, so it's going to be a lot higher demand in there at the end of the day. Don't forget, we are about budget machines at the end of the day. Um, you buy a graphic card today, you're going to spend a fortune. You've got to remember the uh, NVIDIA 1130 and the AMD RX 550 are still between £70 and £75. Pound. But worst date scenario, I have seen them £90. Pound. Um, the RX 550 we used was the 4 gig version, so take that into consideration. Okay, Horizon Zero Dawn. Great game, at the end of the day. I mean, both processors played okay. Obviously, the 11400 was a better version. But the uh, problem with the Pentium Gold... It did drop frame rates. I mean, the one percent low went in some cases went really, really low. Yeah. Now, if you had an Nvidia, if you had an Nvidia eleven thirty, you probably get a slightly better benchmark at the end of the day than the five fifty. But yeah, the, the frame drop in. Um, I mean, I ran the game like four or five times to get the best average, and it didn't seem to make no difference at all on the Pentium at all. The frame rate drop um, was there, and it was noticeable on the screen sometimes. Okay, we're back. Yes, yeah, got another shirt, clean day. Next day. Okay, the point of this video was to get the temperature down. Of the 11400F running at 125 watts, and we use the Cooler Master Hyper 212 CPU fan, which is about 30 35 pound at the end of the day, depending on where you go. And on the benchmarks we've done on Cinebench, Blender, and the others, basically we got it down a minimum um, 18C, which was great at the end of the day. Uh, we achieved the goal and then they we're no longer going to blow up the CPU because it's no good at all running at under the seat constantly it's just bad bad and then they um, basically to be honest with you okay Intel uh, set it as a 65 watt CPU not under 125 watt CPU even though it's capable of doing 125 watts but the fan they supply is hopeless <laughs> to be honest with you it's noisy and it does not stop it from going under the seat now I did have in one case it did actually go under the four I don't know, but it was just one off benchmark I was doing in the four, hello it's got under the four seat um, but yeah so we achieved that goal uh, so what else on the build we used the 550 the RX 550, this one from Asus, yeah, the Phoenix edition. Um, good all-round budget card, but you can see at the end of the day it was capped 
on the M400 and eat this literally, well, even on the, the Pentium Gold, it was being capped at the end of the day. And we used, just used it as a baseline, because at the end of the day, we build budget systems, and that card is basically 70, 75 pound at the best price. And if you can get hold of an MV1130, which is actually a slightly better card, and again, it's usually 70, 75 pound. And they usually come between two or four gig. Ideally, you want to get a four gig version because when I looked them up, they actually were the same price, so or whatever, about two pound difference. Get a four gig version, two gig ain't no good for anybody these days. So, I mean, if you looked at bat, not Battlefield, um, mind you, I didn't really check on Battlefield, but Red Dead, you can see we were going over an eight gig, mem me gig memory limit. So, ideally, if you did want to play games. Now we had 16 gigs to DDR. Yeah, again, 8 gigs is not really enough these days. Okay, so we also had the RX 480. Again, an old card, four years old, and it's probably NVIDIA equivalent, what, 1060? At the end of the day. Now I don't know what the price of these cards are going second hand, but four years old, and you can see on Go and buy um, the benchmarks I was doing and the video work. This card was still 100% utilization. So this card is still too slow for modern processors. And then they, it's a good card, but again, as I said, it's four years old. Yeah. Now it's the same with the 580. They're the same card, but rebranded. Re the 580. So don't think, well, well, 580, 580 is better. It is no better. And then they, you need, really need to go up to the, the 5.7 XT and the new series, the 6 pound series from AMD to really go away at the day. Or MVS 2060, 2070. Um, you might get away from the 2050 at the end of the day. Uh, I have never tried one, so I can't say. Um, so the level 400, I mean, when it comes to Battlefield, you can see multi-core uh, was the way to go. Uh, Dice Engine does love multi-core, and as a gamer, it's like, yes, please make use of the multi-cores, because we've got multi-core chips these days, and no one's making use of them. And it does get your nerves. I mean, if you look at Warhammer, see, it didn't really make a difference how many cores you had. And the day, the Pentium Gold with its two cores versus six cores, very similar performance. Okay, there was a few frame drops more on the dual core, but the average frame rate was still very similar. Um, obviously, when we played Horizon Zero Dawn, the Pentium Go 605, now that dropped frame rates quite badly, and then they, we're talking the 1% low really went down, downhill at the end of the day. So, take the situation, we've got to remember, it's not really a gaming CPU, but, I mean, it did play, and they were still doing good 40 frames a second. Um, but it did show up on the screen, when it had those nightmare 1% lows, it did show, oh, we've got freeze, we've got freeze here. But it only done it every now and then. But, I mean, some people might get irritated by it. But, there's not a lot we can do. Um, Okay, where the RX 480 had no problem at all with the 1% lows. What else have we got? Um, okay, Red Dead uh, Redemption. Now, they did have a funny thing on there, the 720. Uh, I can't work it out. I mean, I did run it like six times. Um, some odd reason that 720p, 11400 was in a really fly. I don't know why, it just did. I, to be honest, it's beyond me, I've, I've got no idea really why that setting seemed to be a lot better off than everybody else, the other settings. Um, but okay, so the conclusion is, at the end of the day, if you're gonna get a level 400 f and you wanna run it at 125 plus watts, yeah, in this case, on this board, it's tower cooler mode, um, make sure you get a good fan. And then they, as I said, the cooling miles, the Hyper 212, 30, 35 pound, 
works. Now I did try it, the Antec, I think it was A30 fan, a little bit cheaper. Um, it certainly, certainly was quiet, I can't take that away from it, but it never stopped it going from under the seat. Yeah, so basically ideally you probably want an 120 mil fan. I think on the Antec it was only an 80 mil fan. Yeah, so you want at least 120 mil fan and a good easy. Don't forget, basically if you, when you're buying third party CPU coolers, you've got distances, including the side of the case. Some coolers come up really high, yeah, and they can hit the side of your case. So make sure you, before you buy one, you've got clearance. Okay, I think that will do for this uh, video. Um, if you want to ask any questions at the end of the day, please do. Oh, I did have a question on the, now I've got the system back up and running, on the Leoni Lee fans, where is the RPM? So I can't get down to 800. If you turn it onto minimal, the actual settings at the bottom on the left hand side, yeah, it will go down to 800 megahertz. So, well, 800 megahertz, 800 RPM. Okay, um, that's it for the video. Again, you want to comment? comments and if you like the video don't and you haven't subscribed please subscribe okay like is all